Chapter 26 Good men did never their country's ruin bring, but when evil men shall injuries begin, not caring to corrupt and violate the judgment seats for their own lucre's sake, then look that country cannot long have peace, though for the present it have rest and ease. <clears throat> William Simmons, E.D. The Proceedings The next morning I'm ready. My canoe, nestled in the rushes, has a bed of blankets, a jar of sweetened water, a clean rag, and a spoon for the baby, and a piece of bread saved for last night's supper for me. I go to Ann and John's cabin. Ann is busy wrapping up dried beef and bread for John, and John is trying to comfort a fussy Virginia. Let me take her for a walk in the fresh air, I say. Then you two can have some time together before the barge leaves. <clears throat> John gladly hands Virginia to me. Anne ties Virginia's tiny bonnet on her and tells me to make sure I support her head. I promise that I will. The fort is swarming with people. I walk by the crowds out the gates and just keep on going. I know there will be people outside the forts as well, so that my message will get back to Anne. At the canoe, I am in luck. Two girls are washing clothes in the river. Ooh, can we see Mrs. Layden's baby, one asks. I tilt Virginia down so they can adore her, being careful to support her head. I'm going to point comfort, I tell the girls as I climb into the canoe. Mrs. Layden will meet me there. I imagine the ruckus when Anne discovers Virginia missing and that these two girls will be in the middle of it, crying out on their high voices that they saw me and I said I was going to point comfort. I will have a head start by then. I'm sure that Anne will be on her way following me. That is what I am counting on, that she will be on that barge with her husband. It will take hours to get to Point Comfort, but in my canoe, I will be quicker than the barge, even with breaks to feed the child. Virginia settles nicely on her bed of blankets and falls asleep as the canoe rocks in the water. I paddle out into the middle of the river where a bit of current will speed me on my way. The trees on the shores have just begun to turn their autumn colors. The day is clear and warm with a gentle wind. I have no fear of a storm blowing up to capsize me. Three times I stop paddling when Virginia fusses to be fed. I spoon the sweet water into her mouth. Then I dip the clean rag into the sweet water, give it to her to suck on, and she goes back to sleep. It is something I saw my mom do when she took care of a baby whose mother had died until she could find a wet nurse. It is late afternoon when we make it to the fort. I pull the canoe up on shore. Nathaniel is on watch along with another soldier who is sound asleep. As I carry Virginia toward him, Nathaniel stares at me open mouth. Don't ask, I tell him. I'll explain later, but please, can I put her in her tent in your tent? Nathaniel shakes his head. I have no re I have to report to you to Captain Davies, my commanding officer, he says. I groan. My meat ration for a month, I offer him. His face lights up and he leads me to his tent. I feed Virginia one more time and lay her down on a straw bed to sleep. She has wet through her blanket. I forget all about diapers. Then I go out to the waterfront to wait for the barge to arrive. I knew she would be angry, furious even. I am not prepared for Anne's rage when she arrives at Point Comfort. I'll kill you, Anne shrieks. She runs at me, her hands raised. I try to grab her wrist, but she's too wild. Her fingernails rake my face. I feel stinging pain. See my blood drip. Let me explain, I shout, but she's screaming too loudly to hear me. Thief! Murderer! Hang him! He yells. John disembarks as well. Are you mad? He shouts. He cuffs me hard. You deserve to be hanged. I start to panic. I have stolen the child. Will they hang me? But she is safe, I say. I did it to keep her safe. Captain Davies takes me roughly by the arm. Don't worry, Mrs. Layden, he says. He will be punished. Anne is sobbing out. Where is she? She demands. I see Nathaniel looking terrified. He does not want to be part of this. I put her in Nathaniel's tent, I say quickly. That is all they need to know. I am dragged off by Captain Davies as Anne runs to find her baby. It is a makeshift brig, but it does the job. Shackles on my wrists and ankles do not allow me to move much. There is no window, just cracks between the rough boards that let me know when the sun has set. I am left with little water and the cold dirt floor to sleep on. For theft of the child, Virginia, what will my sentence be? Hanging? Whipping? I have seen whippings where at the end they are flogging a corpse. Captain Smith said he wanted me alive and well when he returned to Jamestown. I may not be able to follow through on my promise. The worst of it is that I have failed. This is 
this has all been for nothing. Anne and Virginia will return to Jamestown tomorrow with the bard. Since this may be my last night on earth, I try to make my peace with God. I am sorry, I tell him. Sorry that I failed with James and that now I have failed with Anne and Virginia. I hope that at least he understands that I meant no harm to stealing Virginia. I ask to please be taken up to heaven with my mom. In the dark, I huddle in the Virgin and on the floor and wish for the peace of sleep. Captain Davies, the shout wakes me. It comes from the river. Morning light slants into my cell. I hear clumsy paddle strokes and realize someone must be approaching in a canoe. Get Captain Davies now. The shout is closer. I hear footsteps, voices, someone out of breath. It was a trap, the man cries. The voices come near to my jail cell. I press my ear against the wall, hoping to hear Captain Ratcliffe and his men. Only a few have escaped. I listen as he describes the horror. The men were lured to Wirawakamaka with <clears throat> promises of corn. Instead, they were attacked. Their throats slit. Captain Ratcliffe's end was even worse. He was tortured to death. I crouch against the wall, straining to hear, but the voices fade as the men walk away. I shake my head in despair. More men dead and no corn brought back to Jamestown. A sound startles me, the scraping of the lock on the brick door. I get to my feet. It is time to face my sentence and my punishment.